Have you ever thought, why is the transmission system on the right-hand side of the bicycle? If you've given it some thought, you may think it's got something to do with the direction that the threads tighten, but it appears there's something more. So stick around to find out why horsemen, dexterous fish and Egypt have something to do with this story. Virtually every bike in the world has its transmission, the chain, derailleur and drivetrain on the right hand side of the bike. There are a few exceptions to this. Some BMXs have a left hand side drive, track bikes too in very rare occasions and there's also some mountain bikes with complex suspension systems that do have their transmission system on the left. But 99% of all bikes in the world have their transmission system on the right hand side of the bike. To understand why, let's start with some classical physics, namely Newton's third law. Newton's third law states, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This, in simpler terms, means that if an object A pushes or exerts a force on an object B, then object B will also exert a force of equal magnitude but in the opposite direction on object A. So what does this have to do with your drivetrain being on the right hand side? Well, more than you think. If you look at your components on the drivetrain, they're all right hand threaded. So gear pulley screws, right hand thread, um, rear derailleur, right hand thread, even the screws that hold your cranks in place, they are right hand threaded. So essentially, you need a clockwise force to tighten them and a counterclockwise force to loosen them. And as I remember from a kid, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Another component of this is the gear sprocket. Now, traditionally, this was screwed onto the rear hub, single speed, fixed wheel, and this was a right hand thread. It wasn't until the 1980s that the cassette as we know it became a thing. So if the drivetrain was on the left hand side, then the forces exerted on it would actually loosen things. By mounting your drivetrain on the right hand side, this ensures that the pedaling force in fact tightens any bolts instead of loosening them. But there are a few exceptions to this. If you think about your left hand pedal, this does have an opposite thread type to ensure it's not loosened as you're pedaling, as do some bottom brackets, typically an English type bottom bracket. Similar to the pedals, the caps have different threads each side, but in this case, it's clockwise on the left and anti-clockwise on the right. That might seem counterintuitive and would suggest that pedaling your bike would loosen your bottom bracket, but no. The rotational force on the cranks doesn't work on the bottom bracket cup, but on the ball bearings inside. When those ball bearings rotate, they produce a force opposite to their rotational movement. So if the cranks are turning clockwise, the ball bearings will turn anti-clockwise, producing a rotational force in that movement. Phew, that's the physics and the mechanics done. Where's Ollie when you need him? Anyway, all that talk of rotational forces, I think, shows that it is a good thing that the transmission is on the right-hand side of a bicycle. But is that the reason it was there in the first place? This, it seems, is unlikely. So let's go all the way back to King Arthur times. We're talking, you know, Knights of the Round Table realm and the Merry Men. That's not King Arthur, is it? That's Robin Hood. But you get the picture. Anyway. Back then, they used to ride horses on the left. Why, I hear you ask? Well, apparently, you had to mount your horse from the left. Now, there's good reason for this, and that is because most people, way, way, way back, a thousand years, carried their sword on the left-hand side, they were right-handed. So you'd pull your sword out from the left, like that. No need to make the sound effect, but you get the picture. Anyway, it was safer to mount a horse from the left-hand side because it meant that your sword was away from the horse as you swung your leg over. Now, tradition to tradition, this carried on to the art of riding a bicycle. Most of us get on our bikes from the left-hand side, leaving our strongest leg to get us started. Other theories say that the transmission of a bicycle is on the right because the first bicycles with transmission were known as safety bikes. They came from here in England, where everyone drives and rides on the left-hand side of the road. So you mounted your bike from the left-hand side, from the pavement, and because pavements were quite high in those days, you put the transmission on the right to avoid damage as the bicycle was leant against the pavement. And they're also quite high, meaning you could get on the bike without getting too much grease or muck on your clothes. Although I kind of doubt 
the clothes back then, if I'm honest. Going back to the right thread, which I talked about at the start of this video, it's time to mention our old friend Archimedes. For those of you paying attention in school, the Archimedean screw was something of a kind of hydraulic pump, a screw which basically turned and drew water up via its rotation. Now, it's thought that Archimedes talked about this all the way back in 234 BC, and the Egyptians used it to draw water from the Nile. Starting with the Archimedean screw, threads began to be used in other places, such as extracting olive oil and grape juice. Now, the first threads which were made were done through a very laborious handmade process. And it was thought that because most people were right-handed, had greater dexterity in their right hand, and it was actually much easier to turn in a clockwise movement than a counterclockwise movement. Thus, that is the reason why most threads were designed to be a right-hand thread. Once we start getting into more machine tools, the right-hand thread had already become established and it became the standard going forward. But let's go back a bit. Why are so many people right-handed? How did this lead to the right-hand thread? Why do we all love our right hands? Well, that is because of our brains. So our brain is divided into two hemispheres, the left and the right, with the left-hand side being responsible for movement on our right-hand side, or so the theory goes. And it's actually the case that most people are dominant in that left hemisphere. Now, we're not sure why that's the case, but we think it's down to genetics. So if our parents are right-handed, that gets passed on to us and so forth. It's interesting to note that laterality is not exclusive just to humans. Even goldfish have a preferred side. They prefer to swim to the right. Even octopuses have a preferred tentacle, which they like to feed with. Could all this be something to do with the fact that the Earth spins in a counterclockwise direction? Who knows? So, there you have it. Are you keeping up? In short, the drivetrain of a bicycle is on the right-hand side because threads are tightened in that way, and threads are tightened in that way because most people are right-handed, and this is because of genetics, which goes back a long, long time, and that has impacted technology and tools to this day. So there you go. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. You learn something new every day. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. we will see you on the next video. I'm gonna wave bye-bye with my right hand. Maybe my left, just be rebellious.